Launching Starship from Starbase is what everyone expects, but it's not easy with the FAA still in the way. It's tough to remove this barrier quickly. But development demands SpaceX launch faster. Is there a way to avoid that? How about moving to a location without the FAA interfering, like offshore? That sounds pretty promising. So, how would an offshore spaceport be better for Starship? All is going to get revealed in today's episode of Alpha Tech. And before we get into the content, we want to let you know, thank you so much for your support throughout this time. We are very, very close to hitting 100,000 subscribers. But to achieve this, which we're very close to, we do need your help. So if you watch these videos, make sure you hit that subscribe button now. That way, you're guaranteed to never miss out on any of our exciting videos that get updated once, sometimes twice a day. And that also gives us the motivation to keep pumping this content out for you. All right, let's continue. SpaceX has already considered launching Starship from the sea. They even started working on it before. SpaceX's purchase of oil rigs was revealed in Jan of 2021. The deck of Phobos was halfway cleared during intermittent work. Unfortunately, in early last year, CEO Gwynne Shotwell announced SpaceX had temporarily shelved plans for a floating Starship launch platform to focus on entirely gaining more flight experience with the next-generation rocket. However, she remained confident that offshore platforms would become a valuable asset in the future. After experiencing Starship launches and the environmental regulations that SpaceX has to circumnavigate with every land-based launch, we can see the complexities of launching rockets on land under these regulations. Now, we may criticize the FAA and other environmental agencies for their slow and somewhat inaccurate processes, so how long is it going to take them to change all that? Adjusting regs is not something that happens overnight, and creating a workforce with a high level of expertise takes a bit longer than just a month or two. If we're waiting for a regulatory shift from Congress, it could be a long time before SpaceX finds launching rockets easier. So, right now could be the perfect time for SpaceX and their leaders like Elon and Gwynne Shotwell to seriously consider launching Starship offshore. So, why is there a need to launch from an offshore platform instead of using good old solid land? Elon also said that launches and landings had to be far enough away so as not to bother heavily populated areas. The company's plan to eventually carry up to three launches and landings a day would certainly necessitate putting some serious distance between the launch site and people. Most of us could only handle about one sonic boom a month, if that, and this is one of the reasons the FAA is used to delay Starship despite SpaceX providing publicly credible evidence. Besides, a wide no-fly zone and road closure is going to affect in launch days. And if starships do eventually shuttle people around Earth or beyond on a daily basis, the takeoff and landing points would need to be conveniently located. Going a few miles offshore is likely better in this regard than finding a huge empty swath of land in, say, somewhere like New Mexico or Nevada. Rather than building launch pads from scratch, it's possible SpaceX would refurb existing oil rigs. The bigger rigs are about the size of two football fields, and there's plenty of them in the Gulf of Mexico, though only a couple very near Brownsville. There's something inherently appealing about a plan of converting oil rigs, symbols of an industry doomed to decline, into bustling spaceports, which evoke visions of a futuristic era of easy space travel to the moon or Mars. But how feasible is SpaceX's goal of offshore launch pads, and how might they get it done? Turns out the idea of spinning offshore rigs into spaceports is not a new development. From the 60s all the way to the 1980s, the Luigi Broglio Space Center launched payloads into space from a converted oil platform off Kenya's coast. The multinational company Sea Launch converted the mobile drilling rig Odyssey into a launch platform back in 97. Dozens of rockets have blasted payload to space from Odyssey, along with a couple failed launches. Florida's DOC considered creating floating spaceports on offshore rigs in 1989, but ultimately decided the approach was too costly in the short run. In 96, a study published in the IEE Spectrum recommended Russia marry its agile Soviet rocket design with the best oil platform tech, and that may provide an altogether new means of getting big satellites into orbit. Recently, China has achieved milestones in developing and deploying sea-based rocket launch platforms, a crucial step especially for a country with a pretty narrow coastline and situated far from the equator. Launching rockets from land in China poses risks to populated areas, prompting domestic companies to swiftly develop offshore solutions. 
China's Ceres-1 solid-fueled rocket developed by Galactic Energy became the first rocket launched from the sea in September last year. To date, it's done three sea launches, making it the only flexible rocket in China capable of launching from both land and sea. Earlier this year, another rocket with a somewhat comically short appearance named Gravity-1, made by the Chinese company Ariane Space, lifted off from a ship deck that was anchored at sea. At the end of September, another Chinese rocket, this time Smart Dragon 3, got launched from a floating platform off the east coast of China. All launches successfully sent Chinese sats into orbit, demonstrating the nation's capability and flexibility in space tech development. With these advancements in China, it's clear launching rockets from the sea is entirely feasible, raising the question of whether similar technologies could be adopted by companies like SpaceX. But what makes this particularly interesting is the massive scale of their rockets. Ala Pozdavka, a professor at the Scandinavian Institute of Maritime Law, extensively researched sea-based launch facilities and their legal and technological implications. What is really new in SpaceX projects, she said in an email, is that all other projects launch small sets into orbit and some suborbital projects. Meanwhile, SpaceX is trying to eventually launch missions to the moon, Mars, and into hypersonic orbits around the Earth, some of which would carry humans, which is quite different from earlier projects, Alla noted. Obviously, launching on the water can provide strategic advantages to include minimizing safety risks, air traffic interference, limiting noise and nuisance to surrounding communities, etc. According to Sarah Langston, assistant professor of spaceflight ops at Embry-Riddle Aeronautical University in an email, Alla pointed out that mobile oil rigs can also easily move to new locations tailored to the needs of space missions. She cautioned that she wasn't an expert in how to convert offshore oil platforms to spaceports, but said that oil rigs already possess characteristics that are necessary for launches out at sea. They may float or even self-propelled or built to be stable on water, Alla said. However, they must have a system that allows stabilizing the platform for the launch. They'd need to have some support vessels, I would presume, to ensure initiating and control of the launch. Someone needs to push the button, and it can't be done in the immediate proximity to the launch rig. Because SpaceX vehicles are partially reusable, these spaceports might also accommodate landings, which could add another layer of complexity to the company's plans to retrofit the rigs. And this aligns with SpaceX's long-term goals. Perhaps even exceeding CEO Elon's infamously lofty ambitions, Gwynn said that SpaceX has designed Starship to be as much like aircraft ops as we possibly can get, in the hopes of allowing dozens of launches, if not hundreds of launches a day. Now, no rocket family in history has launched more than 61 times in a year, making Gwyn's Starship Cadence target hundreds or even thousands of times more ambitious than a 1980s rocket record that is still standing 40 years later. Dozens to hundreds of Starship launches a day would be two or three orders of magnitude beyond the highest cadences the FAA ever allowed. Gwyn's continued interest in floating platforms is thus unsurprising as they may only be the way that SpaceX can realistically hit those airline-like Starship ops while it's still coexisting with U.S. regulators. In essence, SpaceX made huge gambles on the assumption that a version of Starship mostly resembling what the company's building today is going to be successful, reusable, and reliable. Now, SpaceX has done four test flights of Starship, each making progress, demonstrating the company's iterative development method is being effective. Elon's fail-fast, learn-fast approach seems to be doing quite well with this ambitious project. Unfortunately, regulatory barriers, thank you FAA, particularly environmental ones, appear to be slowing things down. Of course, SpaceX isn't going to let that happen without a fight. Discussions have erupted, and efforts must continue to intensify as they find ways to maintain the development speed of Starship. Gwyn Shotwell's clear desire is to do more orbital Starship launches and gradually gather data, leading to major design changes and optimization. However, if necessary, SpaceX may need to make those adjustments now. The development of Starship is pushing the entire space industry to innovate. Other companies are having to reconsider their strategies to compete with the large payload capacity and ultimately low costs that Starship promises to offer. If SpaceX can overcome the current challenges and bring Starship into commercial operation, it could usher in a new era of space exploration. The fully reusable design and low launch costs could revolutionize how we approach space missions, from commercial satellites to, yep, Mars exploration. Right on. That's it for today's episode. Again, we thank you so much for checking it out and hope to see you back here next time. Take care. Bye.